Hey, my Unique followers, it's me, Kelly, the creative mastermind behind Unique Designs by CNK. Today, we're going to create a Shark Frenzy pencil case. This particular one is a natural order I have. So you're going to watch me, and hopefully you're at home, creating yourself this resin pencil case. Now... Remember, always make sure you're wearing your gloves and your proper PPE when you're handling resin. So, this is a more intricate mold, as you see. I got him off of Amazon. But there's a lot of spaces where you can capture air bubbles. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to spray down especially focus my out rubbing alcohol around the sides as you see i got my rubbing alcohol i always label the bottle because so i don't mix them up and i'm just going to focus on the sides here and your i start because i do a translucent layer on top so you can see both the shark silhouettes on both sides on the top inside and the top so i do glitter down the side i focus on the edge let me just go around i slowly come around We're just going to come around the edge. You're going to do both both pieces. Just like this. Just slowly bring it around. Filling the edge. Because you want the void in the center. To see. So you can place your sharks. And this side, because of the cav certain cavities here, you want to be careful. You're, you're going to get air bubbles, but the spraying the mold with rubbing alcohol seems to help with that problem. Because I do, like anybody else, have a problem with air bubbles in their resin. Some people use different tricks to do it. Some use a heat gun. If you are wanting the, your mold, silicone molds to last a little longer, so you can get a couple more pores out of it, don't use a heat gun on it. I found that I went through molds faster with a heat gun than I did with rubbing alcohol. Like this mold... I've had for months and I have not had to replace him and he's still shiny. I find that using the rubbing alcohol extends the life of the mold a little bit more. Now, if this happens right here, don't worry about it too much because I use to dye the resin here, um, where is it, alcohol ink, which also when you're mixing the alcohol ink into the resin also helps with air bubbles. So I normally let mine sit for a while. I say about 10 minutes. And I just pour it in the center. It kind of helps push some of that resin back. 
some of your glitter that's trying to escape. I do both sides. Now most resins self-level. Now, this is where I'm going to come in and I'm going to do a quick spray because I did see some air bubbles pop. And then, with a little toothpick, because I forgot to pull my toothpick out, so let me grab him, and a pair of tweezers, I'm going to grab my sharks and start placing them. Just like that. Now I'll come back in with a toothpick to push them down. But I use the tweezers to manipulate where I need the particular shark or whatever you're using. This is transparent film. And you can get these shapes anywhere. I forgot this particular one from... These particular ones I got off of Etsy. There's a little seller on there. She has a couple really cute transparent films. And one of these was the shark one. I just realized he's backwards. And I just... Place them in here. Now, when you're using transparent film, you got to be careful, especially if it's printed on. Because you can scratch the ink off of these kind of easily, so you have to be careful. That's why you see me, I'm placing with tweezers. And this is actually a really fun one. Even though he's pretty detailed. And you'll just place him in here like so. Now. He is for a customer of mine. So. I'm quite particular about how pores go, especially if they're not for like me, where I'm just experimenting. If it's for an actual customer, I'm very particular on how I place everything. Because I want my customer to love it as much as I do. As you see, I just come in with too thick and gently just push them down. Because when you push them down, any air bubbles that you may have caught under him as you were placing him are going to disappear. Now, here's where I come in with um, more of the... More of this...
Now, this particular mold takes about 130 to 140 milliliters of resin. I measure in milliliters. Some resin artists measure in ounces. And because my cups are already in milliliters, I just continue to measure in milliliters. It's just easier that way. And I just take, take it along the edge. Now remember, resin pushes and pulls. So I fill my molds all the way up. Just like so. And the noises you hear in the background, that's just my youngest. He's in the, because I do most of my pouring in the living room. He's watching one of his shows. So don't mind him. He, he also takes great pride in seeing what mama's over here doing. Being able to see what all, everything's going on. So this is how it looks like in the mold. Now with resin, it pushes and pulls. So be aware that it pushes and pulls. So if you think glitter is going to stay in one spot, it's not. Because of how it how the resin sets, it will push and pull. So I, that's why I try to focus my glitter on the outside because I can see it starting to spread. And that's just something I can't control. That's just how the resin is. It's going to push and pull. So this is one of the fun pours I had planned. Now stay tuned. There will be more. So until next time, be you, be unique.